Today I want to talk to you a little bit about your personal life. Uh, for most people who have failure in ministry, it is not because they don't know how to study. It's not because they don't know how to preach. It's not because they don't have the basic skills. Most of the failures that occur in ministry are related to people's personal lives. Either their families or their own uh, behavior patterns or their inability to cope with the issues that they face as a pastor. And I want to talk first about freshness. Mr. Fourlines has said, I've heard preachers say I'd rather burn out for Jesus than rust out for the devil. And his reply is, I don't want to burn out or rust out. There are some people in the ministry who are so driven that over time they exhaust themselves to the point that they just simply cannot go on. They have physical breakdowns, they have emotional breakdowns, even mental breakdowns because they've driven themselves so hard. And if you're going to avoid burnout, you're going to have to take some precautions. To avoid burnout and to maintain a freshness and vitality, there are certain things that are necessary. And number one is you must protect your physical health. That means that you need to eat right, you need to exercise regularly, you need to have a regular schedule of rest. You need to eat right. I want to caution you, gentlemen. Don't get that weight on if you can help it. It's a whole lot easier to put weight on than it is to take it off. And the problem is, once you've had it on, even though you can take it off, it comes right back again. If you are slim and trim, do your dead level best to stay that way. If you're struggling with it, it won't get any easier. I hope you'll deal with it sooner instead of later. Second thing that I mentioned there is to exercise regularly, and these two sort of come to be tied together later on in life. While you can, get the weight under control, keep it under control, and make it a practice to exercise regularly. You don't have to become a fanatic about it. Most doctors will tell you a period of 20 to 30 minutes, three to five times a week, if your health is right, will help you keep in good condition. Exercise regularly and then have a regular schedule of, of rest. In that regard, adapt your schedule to the kind of person you are. If you're a night person or a morning person, you can adapt your schedule accordingly. Let me caution you again to avoid the extremes, that is, of staying up or extraordinarily late or getting up extraordinarily early for that matter. Determine how many hours of sleep you need for maximum effectiveness. Be aware that medical experts have concluded that most people require around eight hours of sleep. Listen to the experts on some of these things. It's extremely important that whatever number of hours you sleep, that you have a regular schedule, that you go to bed at the same time and get up at the same time. You have built into your body a biological clock. And you can set that biological clock however you want to set it. The way you set your biological clock is by what you do on a regular basis. If you go to bed at the same time, I would say within a 15 minute period on either side, if you go to bed at the same time every night and you get up at the same time every morning and you do that for uh, several nights, I'd say a week or more, you will set your biological clock. Why do people have jet lag? Well, it's because their body is pre-programmed to go to sleep at about the same time every day, to wake up at about the same time. 
and uh, whenever you fly and and you get somewhere and there, there's places to go and there are things to do, uh, you just end up feeling terrible. If you can only get five hours of sleep, then go to bed at the same time and get up at the same time. Whatever time you're going to go to bed, go to bed. Whatever time you're going to get up, get up within a half an hour of the same time every night and do that on a regular basis and you'll feel better. It's good to let your people know something of your schedule when you get to be a pastor of a church. If you can function at all early, I recommend rising around 6 in the morning. Uh, this is uh, probably not good news to some of you. But most of your people are at work by 8 o'clock or so. And it's not a bad idea for you to have your car sitting at the church when they drive by on the way to work. You simply cannot become known as lazy. Whatever else you do, if your people brand you as lazy, your ministry is over there. You need to impress people with the fact that you are vibrant, you're alive, you're ready, you're involved, you're out there, and you just can't do that by coming in to work all hours of the day. It's a good idea to establish a regular schedule and get to work early. Well, I've said this before, but I want to say it again. You Let your people see you during those first weeks of ministry. They will be looking to see whether or not they see you during those first weeks of ministry. Your psychological and emotional well-being is also very critical. You are a person with feelings and needs and so on just like every other person in your congregation. Um, you need to recognize your own personhood and you have feelings and needs just like everyone else. Here's one of the greatest, if not the greatest battle you're going to fight in your ministry is to answer the question for yourself, how much is enough? How much is enough? You're going to have to answer at some point how much is enough. Here's the reason that question is so important. You'll never finish your job. I don't care how much you work. In this world, there are billions of people who are lost. And we're supposed to reach them all. Now, you reckon you're all going to get that done before dark? You are never going to be able to sit back one day and say, Ah, I got it done. You'll never be done. How much is enough? At what point in my work week am I going to be able to sit back and say, that's enough? The people who teach your Sunday school classes, many of them, probably most of them, work a 40-hour week. The guys who come, out, come to go out with you on visitation, for the most part, are people who work 40 hours a week. Then they come and give time to teach classes, to study, to uh, go on visitation, to do clean up around the church, to work with the youth leader, whatever they do, they give time over and above and beyond their 40 hours a week. So what that means is that for pastors, 40 hours is not enough. If it's not enough for them, it's not enough for me and you, is it? I'm going to propose that about 60 hours a week will be the norm for you. Build in time. You have to build in flexibility to meet the needs of your congregation. If there's some sort of extraordinary circumstance, you, you just have to go. It, it, it doesn't matter how many hours you've already worked. The fact that you're on call 24-7, 365, you have to keep that in mind so you don't feel guilty when you take a day off. And at some point, you're going to have to be able to say to yourself, it's enough.